Yeah, what's up? This your boy JT, the bigger figure. And right now, y'all tapped in with the Tesla, man. Subscribe below and hit the bell. You dig? Serious, but if it wasn't for Black Sea, um, remembering me from the guy from Filmo, that was part of the original group that came to Hunters Point to squash the Filmo Hunters Point beat. That's JT right there. He came to the, he came to Harvard, nigga, he was solid. We did a song called Frisco Niggas Ain't No Punks. We did that song after, after the peace treaty. We liked RBL whether that was 100 point or not. Don't give me no bad my weed, I don't care where you from, we rocking with that. That's what it was. It was a universal language that made us say, fuck where they from. And then made me say, I wanna be like them niggas. I want to be like RBL Posse, Black C, Mr. C, TC on the beat. I want that, but I didn't have no money. That's where the whole thought, well, maybe I need to learn how to make a beat. Shit, me, I know how to go boom, da, boom, boom, da, boom. In jail, we didn't have a drum machine. We went boom, ba, boom, boom. You beat on your chest. If I didn't have this mic on my shit, this chain, I would beat on my chest, and you snap, boom. And then, goddammit, you do your rap. You didn't have a problem with a cadence. You stayed on beat. <laughs> so me wanting to be a producer, that's how I ended up really, really taking it serious because the producer is the one who cooks the dope that the rapper raps on, and then the rapper, the executive producer, put the money up so that y'all could press the shit up, sell the product, and split the money between the executive, producer, and the rapper. I say, well, shit me, I could be all three of these. Yeah, nigga, I'm gonna be the first young nigga that's the CEO, the manager, the producer, the engineer, the lyricist, nigga. And I'm the road manager, because Queen and them didn't have no license. I was the only one with a license, and the whole crew, Demo didn't, Seb didn't, Rich the Factor came to town, he didn't have no license, neither. Yeah, we was youngsters, but it's like, somebody got to, take the charge. We didn't have the knowledge, but JT, I knew I was going to jail. They wasn't worried about jail because they had a few more chances. JT knew one more case, that's a felony. Nine years saying quit, and I'm fresh out of Log Cabin Ranch. So my motivation, I just got to say, and the wherewithal, it came through them elements of going to jail, getting that Scarface tape, goddamn it, uh, D.O.C. and uh, uh, Dr. Dre, you know, a new N.W.A. member. To me, that's I'm looking at it like that. This guy's new, and he's bad than a motherfucker. The formula, high energy, formula to wisdom. Yeah, God damn it, I remember that. Guess what else? Guess how much I love that beat so much in 1990. Guess what happened? Guess what, Bay Area? Guess what, California? Guess what, Universe? Do you know? Dr. Dre made a remix to the formula, and it went something like this. Boom, 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 boom. It was a B-side. It was a bass line. It was a remix. Real simple and subtle. Guess what that tape ended up in whose hands? In my hands. That's the B-side to, it's funky enough, but it's got this new little funky little bass line. Boom, boom. I think I need to take that since it was my favorite song in jail. The song became game recognized, game changed my whole life. You could call me a one hit wonder. Guess what I did? I told myself, all I need is one and I'ma build an empire off of one. I don't care about being no motherfucking rapper shit. Nike get the money, E-40 get the money cause he is the executive producer. Yeah, fuck that shit. I do want to be rap dreams on, you know, on tour. I want to be the big nigga, all that. Nah, I made millions through my whole career. Come and go. Always coming back based on master ownership. I always was the man that either created the masters that was in control of licensing or selling the masters that entitled me to financial transactions based upon what I agree to and not what I'm recommending 
or what I have to take. It's a negotiation based on who owns the master. I never signed a 360. I never had a manager. I never really had nobody believe in me because my whole crew left me at the time when I needed them the most. And Master P them seeing that and said, oh boy, GLP and them over there in-house fighting? See murder, see what the shot, come on. Yeah, we finna sign with Priority Records because I see Fig, it look like Fig doing all the work by himself. True story. Artists of today take for granted the ability to drop a song tonight and it go worldwide tonight. Meanwhile, some rapper is waiting on his platinum beat before he get cooking up on his pursuits of his goals and dreams, you know? Motherfucker, when we wanted to send a song to New York, we had to FedEx it or go to the mailbox. And if we wanted to do a demo spread, you call it an email blast? How about five, six, seven, eight hundred on a goddamn FedEx blast? And you might not even get a call back. That was me. I sent goddamn it priority mail to every executive. I got out that phone book that said, this is the job executive. This is Warner Brothers. God damn it, here go Power. Yeah, here go every motherfucker name and number, right? And the address where they at. When we started, yeah, we could go to the record label, nigga, and go right up in there and go holla at somebody. Yeah, well, when y'all niggas came, they put up bulletproof doors and shit, and motherfucker can't even go talk to nobody. Yeah, you used to go make friends with the secretary. She don't even buzz you in until you got a full appointment. Y'all take it for granted of an email blast. You take it for granted that you could jump on Instagram and go live and talk to somebody about a customer, a, a transaction. You have the ability to sell something using something free. A person like me from the 90s and the 80s, that's why I talk on my shit every day. I'm squeezing a customer out of every live. If one person spends $200 with me, every time I go live, I win. 500, 1,000, 2,500, I got packages for 10. I got shit that I sell for 10,000. You want to buy you a container? You want some land out in Fillmore, Atlanta, right down the street from the Georgia Dome? And I'm not even a real estate agent, but I'm a real estate developer. Because I bought the land. See, when you get the money, it's what did you do with the money, man? Shout out to all these niggas in the Bay that got all the jewels and all the fresh cars, right? I salute y'all, because without that shit right there, my nigga, it ain't even that fun if you can't shine like that, period. Now, that's when you first starting out, but when you be 45 like me, I'm an OG, you niggas is, could be my kids, my nigga, like E40 and Too Short is my teachers. They in their 50s. Them boys don't look tired to me. Now, Foley Water, that's my, that's my teacher, nigga. That's my sensei. That's my mentor. That's my, that's my, that's the evidence to a young dude out of field mode that, goddamn it, I could be, goddamn it, like sick with it records. He got B G, and he got D-Shot, and goddamn it, he got Sugar T. Well, I got Demo, Sep, Queen, and my mama. Shit, nigga, we the GLP. Yeah, nigga, fuck this shit. And I started right just like that. Yeah, motherfucker, I'm finna be like E-40. E-40 signed for $3 million in 1994. Guess what I did? God damn it, I've been on TV, nigga. They came and interviewed me and E-40 at the same time. I was the kid on the TV show. And I had my mom with me. Shout out to my mom out there. Mama Pearl, love you, mama. Yeah, you're good. You fucked up ass son, you know, getting it together. Yeah, the God damn it, the police ain't knocked on your door in years because of me, mama. Yeah, I gave that shit up. I told them niggas in film, y'all can have that shit. I'm about to be like Russell Simmons. Fuck that shit. I'm about to be like, goddamn it, Jay-Z, P. Diddy, and Jay-Z. Imagine this. Jay-Z first show in California is with us in film. We booked Jay-Z and Dame Dash. That's on YouTube right now. On my film called JT in my younger days. R.P. Biggie Smalls, too. His first show is in film, too. Something about film, niggas, like we put up the money and goddamn it, niggas come. 
you know. R.I.P. to Mac Dre, you know. We became good friends, but we jumped Mac Dre first out of jealousy, nigga and Filmo, for no reason, you know, because they had all the bitches. They came from Vallejo with them curls, nigga, and them cougars and stangs, and boy, listen, them hoes, and boy, listen, bitch, you better stand down, ho. No, 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 they go Mac Dre now. That's the romper room gang. Yeah, bitch, well, we about to romper room gang them niggas. Come on, y'all. Yeah, well, we did good in the club. Got outside. Mac Dre and them got to them cougars at the end of the alleyway. Chopper City. Shout out to Mac Dre and them for not killing us film on niggas. Idiots running to a niggas and they running to their car like they just, you know, we gonna bust their windows out. You know, right they in the car, hiding out. Shit me. Mac Dre got Tech 9. He ain't shoot that bitch. The other nigga had his fucking 12 gauge shotgun. That motherfucker was illegal. He was finna blow us down. We ran. We was the fastest film on running niggas ever. Until we got into it with Sebo and them, and they did the same thing. We broke in their shit, stole their cars, and filmed more at the show. Yeah, and then, goddammit, they ran to a van. They chased us with some machine guns through Filmo, too. We got away, though. Shout out to Sebo. Yeah, I be telling the truth. I don't want a nigga to know. And my man Fresh Dan, you know, our first you know, rap attempt to take something from a rap nigga, it was LL Cool J at the Warfield. My homeboy Fresh Dan, he got the chain. Yeah, but them boys got to him though about a half a block later. I didn't know LL had the muscles like that. I guess he was lifting weights. Cause they beat the shit out of French Dan boy. Nigga never touched LL again, cause LL is a killer. And I'm just putting that out there for people to understand my demographic of how deep I go. And yes, I got Nas chain back. And Young Buck chain back. Them chains was worth some money too. I was thinking about going to the pawn shop with them bitches. But my name and reputation means more to me than a nigga chain, so I'd rather have the honor of giving a nigga back they shit. So, you know, maybe my chain gets stole out there in they city. I don't know. You know, I just thought, you know, and I love the Lakeview niggas, no, no disrespect to them. But man, the Lakeview niggas that done that that night, man, I'm finna pop them niggas in the club, man. Give me them chains back. Nigga, you niggas finna get fucked over in this club. Boy, it's a Filmo party right now, my nigga. You can't rob Nas, nigga, in our hood. If Nas getting robbed, we rob him. And that's, how, that's pretty much how it always been. You know, we, we was clear about that. But that is not the point. The point and the angle of the rap career and the things that shape me when you ask these questions, if I don't tell you this part, you won't know why I'm saying this part. Straight up. Okay, Mac Dre, after that happened, I went to jail. And then when I went to jail for the all of 1990, I got out December 10th. 91, I started my rap pursuits. Mac Dre was, hadn't went to jail yet. I think he went to jail in 91 or 92. Cause he didn't get out to goddamn it to, no, 1998. Yep, 1998. Yep, and when he got out in 1998, because I never got to meet him. The first time I met him, we was jumping him. And he wasn't no punk or nothing like that. It's just they was outnumbered, so, you know. And goddamn it, we was, yeah, y'all not getting none of these hoes tonight. That was the whole thing was about some hoes, man. It wasn't about no money. It wasn't even about no albums. We didn't even know we was rapping yet. We just know Mac Dre and them with them cougars and them goddamn Mustangs and them Jerry Curls niggas swinging like this. You know, talking that Chris high shit, man, listen. We ain't seen no shit like that. Yeah, the whole crew got curls? Oh man, these niggas fresh to death, I couldn't get one. Yeah, but God damn it that night. But long story short, Mac Dre earned all his respect. I bought his tapes after that, because I was happy he didn't shoot at us. They could have killed us, you know? And that's a great thing, the man could have killed you niggas. It was our fault too, we would've been dead. It never been a get low, GLP, none of that shit. You know, but. Guess who the first person Mac Dre see when he get out of jail? God damn it, JT at Jack London Square. Talking to a little breezy, trying to, you know, close the deal. Yeah, I caught me a little open cheek, you know, I'm trying to close the deal. And God damn it, I see a nigga with a beard look like a goddamn mountain man. And God damn it, no one care. It's this nigga, Mac motherfucking Dre. Me and that nigga looked at each other like motherfucker. Yeah, and right then and there, I told the little Breezy, I gotta go, cause I'm going to the Chris I. And I made the first beat for Ghetto Gumbo to help him start his career as the new Mac Dre. Yeah, Mac Dre 
We put out multiple projects. We put them bitches out back to back to back to back. Mozzie doing it. Burner doing it. Filthy doing it. JT started that campaign to give evidence to the independents out there. When you get your buzz, nigga, keep your foot on the pedal. When you get cold, you gonna know it's cold. But goddamn it, why you even warm? You keep your foot on that motherfucking pedal. You know, but shout out to Mac Drake because he did everything like I showed him and taught him. They was ne there was no one that did the multiple project campaign like JT. And that is an architectural formula that Master P was able to utilize on a national scale, which made it look even better. But that was still JT blueprint. JT just lost out on that one. It wasn't meant for you right then and there, Fig. It was meant for him so he could go help this out. But Mac Drake getting out, it was helping the Bay. Hell motherfucker, yeah. Mac Dre is home, baby. The bank robber. <laughs> yeah, got away with the money and didn't tell. Nigga, you forever the, the top nigga for us. Tupac got to talk to you. When, 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 when they both was alive, Tupac got to bow down to that right there. That nigga robbed banks, nigga, and got away. And didn't tell now. And had a new album finna drop. That's a reason for these niggas to tell. Especially on here. You know. But um, I kind of figured, man, you know, it feel good to say that was my friend that I helped, you know, and he helped me by being Mac Dre, and then I helped him by saying, look, bro, don't come home and do it this way. Go see Walter Zelnick that you've been dealing with. Go do the finished product deal, the content creation deal. Did you notice at the end of his life, Mac Dre and then they got Genie with the lap, and got them this one, and then that one. My bro, listen to me. The last time I seen him was his party in San Francisco right before he went to Kansas City. And he told me, thank you, bro. That shit working. I got these folk. I said, you got these niggas in the headlock, man. Drake, boy, and go. By Monday, he was dead. Fucked up his shit, man. I'm sitting in the car, man, me and my son crying. Right? Like, God damn, man. What didn't happen out there, bro? Then when I heard what happened, I say, that sound like Mac Dre, though. If it went down like that, leaving the hotel, one more run, late night play now, the this man, baby, the this man, you up at night, you going to get the money. It was some people that was jealous of the boy's swag was like, God damn it, a tornado through any nigga city. You know, so. But guess what? I got all the footage of me and my nigga in Kansas City, the same place that killed him. In fact, Tony and them is in the video. We was all friends then. You know? Hell no, nah, I ain't gonna never be mad at Kansas City, man. That's like me being mad at Atlanta for getting shot. Come on, bro. Shit happens, bro. We lost a legend. We love Rich the Factor, Tech 9, 57th Street Road Dog. We love y'all. And that's on mamas. I do. Yeah, when they was talking about falling out with Kansas City, all that, nigga, I'm going out there. I know somebody from Phil Mo killed Fat Tom and doing double life for it. I guess he paying the price. That is their business. I didn't know what happened. I still don't know what happened. I knew I was in Kansas City. In fact, Tom Peoples rolled up on me. And I know if I had my hands dirty, I know I was a goner because I didn't know who them niggas was. Yeah, but I'm saying this to say, you don't know what rapper you with right now that's finna be the new legend. Show him some love. Show him some love. All you rappers that want to stunt with your shit and all that, that's good. That's part of the rap shit. At a certain point, after you didn't did it for a while, man, turn off on that, man, and turn up on looking out for the hood before you be dinner, nigga, getting Swiss cheese on the side of the freeway in your fresh ass car, nigga. Shout out to Quavo following my lead, nigga. Shout out to Young Dolph following my lead. I was the first nigga riding bulletproofs. Yeah, I was the first nigga telling him to go get the bulletproof. My folk in Canada got him, nigga. 100 band, 60 band, 50 band, nigga, what you want? B6 armoring, nigga, uh, 7.62. Ten niggas surround you with Dracos and spray this bitch down, nigga. You have a cup of coffee in that bitch. Survival war tactics type shit. Shout out to Master P, who had a tank that was gone. Well, JT got a real tank, and that bitch black. Yeah, I love it.